We've all heard how the mainstream classroom was invented in the 19th century, but here's the implicit mythology that really drives schooling. Suddenly, a few thousand years ago, human civilization popped into existence, equipped with sacred books that contain the absolute truth about who we are and how we should be. And of course, it's only logical that since books contain such powerful wisdom, then the ability to create books by manipulating symbols must be the most important skill to have. The key to passing symbol manipulation skills, and therefore our power and wisdom, from one generation to the next is the institution of school. But access to schools and the skills of the book were restricted, and it was assumed that dutifully accepting guidance from the book caused success and prosperity. Then just a few hundred years ago, science came along and proved even more effectively that manipulating symbols is really powerful. The books produced by science were not deemed sacred, but they began to give those who could understand them seemingly miraculous powers. These developments just made all the more obvious that manipulating symbols must be the most important skill to have. And we, the people of the book, succeeded like never before, although our success brought problems too. Lots of us were flocking to the industrial cities where more people lived together than ever before, and chaos reigned. Inspired by the very scientific industrial revolution that was causing the problems, we cleverly reorganized our schools like we organized our new factories, and we nobly started down the path to making everyone literate. We redesigned the schools to reflect both our heritage as people of the book, who deserve their good fortune, but also borrowed ideas from the factories that were making us a global force. Thus, we transformed from the people of the book into the people of the book factory. Now schools generously share the secret of our success by making children learn how to manipulate symbols. And as we have spread throughout the world, we have enabled more and more humans to live at a level that would have been the envy of the richest people of the distant past. The scientific industrial complex has transformed the world and given us global dominion. But our success is once again forcing us to face difficult problems. And as people of the book factory, we have faith that our symbol manipulations will guide us to the technological innovations we need to survive and live happily ever after. Of course, that is not the whole story. There's a lot missing. The truth is the majority of human history was completely left out. And of course, we were not spontaneously generated out of nothing, equipped from the beginning with literacy in schools. Literacy and so-called civilization were developed from at least 50,000 years of storytelling. And even before that, the stage on which we arrived was set by over 4 billion years of life's evolution. Here's the real story of school. Learning began when life emerged about 4 billion years ago from planetary chaos that was dissipating energy all over the place. Deep under the first oceans near the Earth's crust arose an even more efficient channel for dissipation of energy. It was a self-making molecular system that could act on its environment to dynamically respond to changes as it dissipated energy. These molecules teamed up to form the first living cells. They were so successful that their population exploded and forced some of them to live in danger near the surface where sunlight could kill them. But life responded with creativity by developing photosynthesis to break water molecules apart dissipate the energy from the hydrogen and exhale the toxic oxygen, which bubbled out of their home, the ocean, into the atmosphere, so they didn't have to worry about it. A demanding environment was the first catalyst for learning. Photosynthetic life was wildly successful and exhaled so much toxic oxygen that after a few billion years, they caused a global environmental crisis that threatened to kill them off. But some organism figured out how to breathe oxygen and turn the toxin into a nutrient. Learning changed both the structure and the process of living. Oxygen breathers were so successful that they diversified to encompass every area of the planet, both in oceans and on land. Species were constantly specialized to fit ecological niches, but if their niche changed too fast and they failed to adapt, 
extinction. The diversity of life exploded and contracted a few times, including the rise and fall of the dinosaurs. And eventually primates emerged. Then humans, who are the ultimate ecological generalists. Humans could deliberately change their patterns of awareness or consciousness, so they became another catalyst for life's learning. Now learning can change the structure, the process, and or the pattern of life itself. The original humans lived according to their local version of the story of how the gods created them as just one of many life forms within the sacred hoop whose fates are entirely in the hands of the gods. Every group of humans created a unique story about how to live properly in their niche, which they passed on to their children. But they all believed that as long as they acted as keepers of the sacred hoop, then all would be well. The keepers were so successful that they overcrowded the easiest places to live, and some people were forced to live in danger, where harsh conditions made living extremely difficult. Then one day, a tribe figured out that the gods were about to wipe them out, and they decided to take their fate in their own hands. These were our ancestors who developed a new story about how we could be powerful, like the gods. We broke the sacred hoop and swooped down out of those dangerous lands to conquer our neighbors and began subjugating people and lands in the hope that we could take control of fate. We, breakers of the sacred hoop, have been subjugating and controlling so long that we can change the environment itself in response to changes in our human story. We developed writing and began to endlessly repeat exactly the same sacred story as if it were the absolute truth, independent of where it originated. We invented schools to make sure the symbol manipulation skills for creating sacred books would be passed on. The development of the book eventually led us to the development of the factory, which became the final piece that gave us dominion over every ecology on the planet. We combined them to become the people of the book factory, and we spread both the Breaker's story and the book factory schools across the globe. Breaker schools embody the story of how important it is to be in control by managing everything that a child does. Adults control the children so that they will learn the skills for success. But Breaker schools are exclusively devoted to the symbol manipulation skills of our Breaker ancestors and utterly neglect the deeper lessons from our Keeper ancestors and life itself. So now we, Breakers, have been so successful that we put ourselves in danger by fouling our nest with our own waste, and we are at risk of extinction, like the dinosaurs. We are now, like it or not, Agents who are capable of changing the way our world works, but we need to recognize that the keepers of the sacred hoop had it partly right. We can be wiped out if we do not recognize our proper place in the world. We need to mend the sacred hoop and act as co-creators with all the rest of life, the universe, and God, because complete control of fate is impossible. We need to embrace and nurture sacred stories that help us to live sustainably. It is time for us to become menders of the sacred hoop. We need to honor the power of the sacred mystery that can both bless us with health and wealth, and use volcanoes, tsunamis, disease, our fellow humans, and many other mechanisms to kill us at any time. Schools need to realize that the most elementary lesson we need to learn from our ancestors is a proper attitude towards the world and our proper place in it as powerful agents. Academic skills are secondary. We need to teach our children how to be both the masters of their own attention and wise decision makers who have compassion for all of the life around them that will be impacted by the decisions they make. And then perhaps we'll figure out how to live happily ever after. Fortunately, we don't have to invent mender schools from scratch. There are schools around the world that put attitude before academics and are on the path to mending the sacred hoop, even if they don't call it that. Many are part of the democratic education movement, and in any case, they are few and far between. So it will take some effort to scale them up and help other schools transform to meet the challenge. Thanks for watching.